Hi, I'm Cameron, and I'm the product lead for the Go programming language at Google. Today, we're going to discuss software supply chain security, what it is, why it matters, and how the tools we ship with the Go programming language can help you secure your software supply chain at every step of the software development lifecycle. And if you don't use Go, we'll also discuss other tools that Google makes available to help you secure your software supply chain in other popular languages as well. Let's start by describing the problem. What is software supply chain security? Most software that we write today is composed of both the source code that you write and the third-party libraries that you rely on as dependencies. A build process then combines these sources and outputs packaged software, which in turn can be run directly by your organization or consumed by other parties as their dependencies. Your dependencies can be open source or off the shelf, but either way, they will have contributors and dependencies of their own. Together, this constitutes a software supply chain, and you can be a supplier, a consumer, or both. Increasingly, the software supply chain has itself become a vector for attacks. Recent high-profile attacks highlight the vulnerable surface areas targeted by these attacks and the impact they can have. Let's take an example. Say you're writing package A, and to do so, you depend on several other packages which provide some functionality. They, in turn, might also depend on packages as well, and so on. Now let's say there's a vulnerability deep in your dependency tree. Deep and far away as it is, this vulnerability might have consequences for your project. That's because the problem isn't isolated to package K. It could affect I. It could affect anything that depends on I, like B, C, D, or E. Worst of all, it could affect you because of a problem in some leaf package you've never even heard of. With the web of dependencies relying on other dependencies getting larger and more complicated, there are lots of places to stuff a vulnerability that affects wide swaths of a language ecosystem. This is in part because dependency graphs can be complicated, making vulnerability detection and remediation intractable. You may think your dependency graph looks like this, but really, it looks more like this. Dependency graphs are complex. The rendering on this slide describes Kubernetes. In Go, we solve for this and other security problems by addressing it end-to-end -end throughout the entire software development lifecycle. By shifting security considerations into the left or inner development loop, we can detect and fix problematic dependencies before we rely on them. This starts with Go's powerful dependency management system, where the Go module proxy, checksum database, and package website at pkg.go.dev warn you if a library you depend on is tampered with or suffers from a known vulnerability. Next, the Go plugin for Visual Studio Code checks whether your dependencies have known vulnerabilities as soon as you import them. If you choose to keep the dependency anyway, say because it doesn't affect you, the Go plugin will warn you again if your code does end up invoking the vulnerability. Switching gears, Go also includes the Delve Debugger, which helps you efficiently fix bugs and would-be vulnerabilities. Outside the IDE, after you've finished writing your code, Go's vulnerability management system provides tools to scan your code for vulnerabilities at the command line or as part of your CI. And the Go compiler itself builds an SBOM, or Software Bill of Materials, that lists all of the modules, versions, and dependencies on which your application relies. The compiler writes this SBOM into every binary it builds, so you can later verify that these binaries are correct. Moving on to testing, Go includes a robust test framework built natively into the Go toolchain, and built-in fuzzing, an automated type of testing which intelligently manipulates inputs to your program using coverage feedback and other signals to find bugs, which is particularly valuable for finding security vulnerabilities. Looking towards the outer or right development loop, Go tooling can scan your binaries for vulnerabilities, say those that were discovered in your dependencies after you already pushed your code into production. And because the Go compiler gives you static, standalone binaries with no system-wide dependencies or a separate runtime, you can reduce the attack surface on your application to the dependencies you explicitly manage and control. Go's memory model and garbage collection provide you memory safety at scale with a performant garbage collector. And Go's compatibility promise, in which we ensure backward compatibility with new releases starting from Go 1.0, means that upgrades are easy, which makes staying up to date with security fixes and enhancements easy too. The Go runtime includes features like a dynamic data race detector, which can help you avoid hard to debug data races. And finally, 
As we said before, Go's vulnerability management system enables you to continuously monitor your binaries for newly discovered vulnerabilities, with or without your source code. Next, my colleague Julie will dig into some of these pieces in more detail. Off to you, Julie. Thanks, Cameron. Hi, everyone. I'm Julie, and I'm the tech lead for the Go security team. Cameron just gave us a really great overview of all the tools available to Go developers that can help you secure your software supply chain. I'm going to talk a bit more in detail specifically about dependency management. As Cameron demonstrated for us, your code likely reuses software from other people's code bases. To help you manage these external dependencies, Go provides you with a dependency management system known as Go modules. If you've been developing in Go for a little while, you might already be familiar with Go modules. If not, a module is simply a collection of Go packages stored in a file tree with the go.mod file at its root. This slide shows us what a go.mod file looks like. For a given module, it will specify the module path, the minimum version of Go required by the module, and the module's dependencies. In addition to the go.mod file, a module also contains a go.sum file with the expected hashes of the content of each of its dependencies. These hashes are also stored in a checksum database, which is a global source of go.sum lines. The go command, go module mirror, and checksum database together ensure that every single time you download a specific module version, the bits you get the first time are going to be the same bits you get every time. While modules help you manage your Go dependencies, you need additional tools to know if any of those dependencies might contain a vulnerability. This is why we introduced Go support for vulnerability management and incorporated it into every step of the software development lifecycle. Here's what Go support for vulnerability management looks like on a high level. As Cameron mentioned, supply chain attacks are on the rise and software vulnerabilities have grown significantly in the last few years. To make it easy to detect these vulnerabilities, we first need to know what vulnerabilities actually exist in the Go ecosystem. To create this comprehensive data source, we pull vulnerability data from a variety of places. This includes the GitHub Security Advisories database, CVEs from the National Vulnerability Database, security releases for the Go project, and direct reports from Go package maintainers. Vulnerabilities from all of these data sources are then aggregated together into the Go vulnerability database. Each report in this database is reviewed and curated by someone from the Go security team so that we can make sure to maintain a consistent quality and style. The database lives at vuln.go.dev and it's publicly accessible to everyone. Lastly, while anyone can easily read data from the Go vulnerability database, we did want to make it really easy for developers to scan for vulnerabilities in their projects. So we built vulnerability scanning directly into the tools that we know Go developers are already using as part of their workflows. This includes the Go package discovery site, pkg.go.dev, a new command line tool known as GoVoneCheck, and the Go extension for Visual Studio Code. Here's what each of these integrations look like. Let's start by looking at pkg.go.dev. So say you're on pkg.go.dev and searching for a package you might want to pull into your project. If that package has a vulnerability, there will be a red banner at the top of the page giving you information about what that vulnerability is. If you're using a different version of the module, you can click on the versions page to see what other versions might be affected. The Go package site also provides detailed descriptions of each vulnerability from the Go vulnerability database to make it easy to browse and read about vulnerabilities that may affect you. To make it easy to run vulnerability scanning directly from your command line and CI/CD pipelines, we also provide a tool known as GoVulnCheck. GoVulnCheck provides a low noise and reliable way to scan for vulnerabilities that may affect your code base. GoVulnCheck analyzes your code base and compares your dependencies against data in the Go vulnerability database. This output contains two important sections of information. The top half tells you about vulnerabilities that actually affect your code base. This is determined based on looking at which functions in your code are actually calling vulnerable functions. The bottom half tells you about vulnerabilities in packages that you import, but they're not called. This information breakdown aims to help you determine how your code is actually affected by a given vulnerability and save you time in making the necessary remediations. 
Lastly, you can run vulnerability scanning directly from your editor with the Go extension for Visual Studio Code. To scan for vulnerabilities in your module, simply run the toggle vulncheck command. From your go.mod file, you can see the diagnostics for potential vulnerable dependencies. You can also take a code action and run go vulncheck and see which vulnerable functions are actually being called. This will show the output of go vulncheck in your terminal. You can also view this information by hovering over an individual dependency in your go.mod file. And lastly, you can easily upgrade to a version of your dependency where the vulnerability is fixed by clicking on a quick fix option. So as you've seen, Go provides you with an end-to-end -end platform to help you secure your software systems out of the box. But what about for other languages? For that, I'll hand it over to Nikki. Thanks, Julie. G'day, I'm Nikki, joining you from the Gadigal lands of the Eora Nation in beautiful Sydney, Australia. I'm the product manager for Depths.dev and the Google open source security team. Now, we've heard about some of the ways that Go is leading the way in software supply chain security, which is fantastic for those of us lucky enough to be using Go. But I have good news for those of us working in a different language ecosystem, or indeed working on cross-language projects, because the reality for many of us is a project with an intricate, complex, multi-language code base, which means you're subject to the quirks and challenges of multiple different language ecosystems. And those challenges are quite considerable and quite different across the various systems. For instance, we're talking about the difference between a median dependency graph having around 10 dependencies in a language ecosystem like Go or Python, with more like 60 to 70 in Rust or JavaScript. And that's a lot more dependencies to have to track. And then there's the fact that those graphs aren't static. There is a lot of churn. For languages like JavaScript, Python, and Rust that preference the newest version in their dependency resolution algorithms, we see 10 to 25% of all published packages have a change in their dependency graphs every day. Plus, there are big spikes of over 60% of the entire ecosystem, especially in Rust. Uh, this is where a popular package that's critical to the ecosystem, that is where a lot of packages depend on it, if that package puts out a new version, that has large consequences that flow throughout the whole ecosystem. We see this happen quite a lot. Every day, 40,000 packages on NPM have a change in their dependencies that causes a change to their license set or their advisory set. And that is a lot of constant change. And as for who is making those changes, potentially deep in your dependency graph, well, as of March 2023, if you were using Kubernetes, you were implicitly trusting not just the owners and contributors to Kubernetes directly, but ultimately the nearly 14,000 contributors who have written code used directly in Kubernetes or its dependencies. That's a lot of trust going around. So it's critical to have tools to understand and reason about your open source supply chain security. So here's the good news. Google is working on a suite of tools for open source software security that will let you, if you'll excuse the pun, go further, including especially tools like depths.dev to help you understand and manage your dependencies, the OSSF scorecard project to help you decide on and reason about your dependencies, and OSV scanner to help you uncover and act on issues that need addressing. Depths.dev lets you explore and evaluate your dependencies at an ecosystem level. The Open Source Insights data at depths.dev lets you explore, understand, and evaluate those dependencies and their transitive dependency graphs. Think license and advisory information, as well as lots of other associated metadata. And all those graphs that Cameron and I have highlighted, these are from depths.dev. And there are some nifty features to help you dig in and understand those dependency graphs better too, like highlighting all the dependencies with advisories and the paths to them, or focusing in on a particularly gnarly advisory to get a handle on what to do next. The depths.dev data is available on the website, 
And there's also an API and a big query data set. So you can build it into integrations and surface the data exactly when and where you need it. One of these aggregated data sources that's included within depths.dev is the OSSF scorecard project. You can think of these checks as security health metrics. They help open source consumers judge whether their dependencies are safe and help open source maintainers improve their security best practices. These checks range from whether or not a project or package uses good practices like code review, branch protection, and whether they sign their releases, whether they use fuzzing or continuous integration tests. One of the checks of particular interest is whether there are any known vulnerabilities. Now, this data is pulling from osv.dev, the open source vulnerability data set. Actually, more than a data set, OSV is a simple unified schema for describing vulnerabilities precisely, where possible, right down to the commit, making it an open, precise, and distributed source of vulnerability information. OSV.dev is the aggregated database that powers the vulnerability information available at depths.dev. It provides the data for OSSF scorecards vulnerability check, and it also runs OSV Scanner, which rounds out our mini toolkit tour today with a command line tool to give you a summary of any known vulnerabilities affecting your repo. Here, I'm running OSV Scanner on an old version of Memos, a popular self-hosted memo hub. And we can see from the output table that this version is affected by several vulnerabilities in both Go and NPM. More than that, for the Go vulnerabilities, these are split into called and uncalled vulnerabilities. And there'll be more language ecosystem support coming soon. So from here, as a developer, I have a clear understanding of what my next steps should be and where to prioritize my efforts. And indeed, good news, these vulnerabilities have all been patched in the newest version of Memos. So from dependency management and monitoring to vulnerability scanning, Google provides you with a suite of tools for open source software security. Whether you're building purely with Go or across the open source ecosystem, we've got you and your supply chain covered. Back to you, Julie and Cameron. Thank you, Nikki. And thanks to all of you for tuning in. For more information on any of the tools we discussed in this video, check out the resources in the description.